Uh, that big word, inconvenient, uh, it's one of the words that I oftentimes hear from my patients on why they're not doing something I'm recommending. Uh, and, and I use that word in that way myself from time to time. Uh, but today for our Fallbrook Church COVID-19 update, I wanted to address this, this issue that many people find to be inconvenient. And, that, and for that, I'm going to do a little show and tell. How, how many, I haven't done show and tell since elementary school, but I have four things in my suit coat pocket. So I'm going to show you what these four things are. The first one is a spoon. Now, why, why would I bring a spoon out to talk to you about COVID-19? Well, there'd be a lot of potential analogies there, but I'm going to use that spoon with these other three items. The other, the other items is a bottle of liquid vitamin D, which we've discussed several times already in these Fallbrook Church COVID-19 updates. Uh, and I have, a, I have a little bottle of vitamin K2 and a, a bottle of vitamin A liquids. Now, the, the issue is what's the right dose? Okay, what's the right balance between these three vitamins? Is it possible that we can get so much of one vitamin therapeutically in a good way that even though it's necessary and it's actually helpful to us, that we're actually now getting an imbalance of some of the other nutrients? Is that possible? When we talk about putting on the full armor of God, we, we talk about the sword of the spirit and how important it is. But wouldn't it be better if we have a shield and the sword? Wouldn't it be better if we have a shield, a sword, and a helmet of salvation? Of course, we want to have all the armor available to us spiritually and physically as well. So the, it, there's a lot of confusion as to what the appropriate dose is. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of different circumstances and literally different people need different doses of these nutrients. So let's, let's start with with this vitamin D. Just uh, Thursday on December 10th, 2020, uh, Dr. Roger Schwelt put together an hour-long presentation on his MedCram uh, YouTube channel and MedCram.com uh, website on, on all about vitamin D and COVID-19. There's, you know, you can, you can look up vitamin D on the internet and you can find a lot of good things about it. And then you can hear yeah, a lot of criticisms and no, 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 we're not ready for this. This is, this is where very premature, etc. Well, what is the truth, right? Okay, whether we're talking about spiritual or theological issues or scientific issues, there's always different sides to issues and we need to come to understand what is the truth? What does the evidence really show for those of us that are actually studying? If it's theological, are you actually studying the Bible and asking the question, what does the Bible say about this rather than what the popular preachers say about it? If it's a scientific issue, we need to ask, what does the science literally say by digging in deep? Dr. Roger Schwelt in his hour long presentation did a fantastic, the best job I've ever seen any doctor do and explaining why vitamin D is so critical. So take my word for it. Take the word of somebody that's been working with COVID patients since the very beginning and has published more videos on COVID-19 than any doctor in the world. Okay, so, so that, that's a recommendation on my part. Secondly, the, the issue comes up, well, how do you know how much to take, right? So that's why some people are just indiscriminately just taking a whole dropper full. Well, I heard somebody say, in fact, I, I actually heard Dr. Youngberg say that they just take a dropper. Well, there are certain times when you want to do that, but you don't just necessarily do that every day because a dropper full typically represents about 25 drops at 2,000 units per drop. That's what? That's 50,000 units. Uh, a, just a couple years ago, my older daughter, Maddie, if I may call her out on this, um, you know, you know, our kids, they listen to us, but they don't always really, really listen. So she, she, had, she had listened to us about taking vitamin D to protect herself against the flu and so forth. And so then she, she got sick one day. She just decided, I'm going to start taking vitamin D. And so she, somehow she remembered 
that she should take a dropper full of vitamin D. Well, if you're sick, that's what you do. You do that for three to five days, uh, and then you go back to your normal maintenance dose. Ah, but that's, that's the part she forgot. And so about four months later, she came up to me during a break from, uh, from college, and she said, what are these bumps on my fingers? So I, I examined her fingers, and she had these calcifications on the tendons uh, of, of her fingers and, um, and, and the ligaments. And I said, Maddie, how much vitamin D are you taking? She says, well, I'm taking a dropper like you told me to. I said, I told you to take that when you're sick, <laughs> not just every day forever. And so she was actually getting excess calcification. So here, this is the main, main point of this, of, of, of this little short segment. Make sure you've done your homework for you. Okay, if you are overweight or diabetic or have underlying heart disease or hypertension, you not only need more vitamin D than people who are not overweight, hypertensive, diabetic, and have underlying heart disease or kidney failure or chronic kidney disease, okay, but you also have a greater need to balance that appropriately with other nutrients, in particular vitamin K and vitamin A. Why? Because that's what greatly minimizes or neutralizes any potential for that to lead to excess calcification. I had a patient just a few days ago that came to see me because of dementia, and, and uh, they explained to me that he had a calcium, coronary calcium score, which should be ideally zero. That means there's no calcium in your arteries. This, you're not supposed to have calcium in your arteries. You're supposed to have calcium in your bones and in your teeth. So um, the, um, uh, his score, and by the way, heart disease and moderate plaque buildup is between 100 and 300 on the calcium score. His score is 750. So obviously he, like many of us, unbeknownst to us, have a problem with excessive tissue calcification. If we're elderly and we're having thinning bones, we almost automatically are getting tissue calcification. And we call it the, the uh, calcium uh, calcification paradox. You're demineralizing your bones, and in doing so, you're mineralizing your arteries and your, your brain and your kidneys. So the point here is we have to have a balance of these nutrients. So, so normally we would take between, between two and five drops of the vitamin D, which is four to 10,000 units of vitamin D daily. How do you know how much to take? You should be checking your vitamin D. However, we're in the right in the middle of the worst COVID season and the worst uh, pandemic season that any of us are probably gonna see in our lifetime. And so what if you haven't been taking any vitamin D up until now? Okay, and that's a real quagmire because your vitamin D blood levels are so low that now you need to take more than a maintenance dose. You don't just get on a maintenance dose of 4,000 or even 10,000 a day because you're really low. So you gotta balance. But, you, but so the, the study that I brought up a couple weeks ago that was, that was published in Postgraduate Medicine, which is one of the British medical journals, in November of this year, uh, looked at giving 60,000 units of vitamin D, just regular vitamin D, every day for seven days to and patients who were in the hospital with COVID, but they had mild or no symptoms. In other words, they were in the hospital for another reason. Okay, but they, they tested positive and they just had mild or no symptoms. They gave him 60,000 units, that's 30 drops a day for seven days straight. And even then, the, the average patient did not develop optimal vitamin D blood levels until after seven days. In fact, after seven days, only two thirds of the patients taking 60,000 units a day had optimal levels, okay? After two weeks, only three-fourths had optimal levels. And so 25, and that's, okay, so I'm just giving you context. In other words, folks, if you're, if you're being complacent about this, this is one of the simplest strategies available for anybody around the world, and yet hardly anybody is taking advantage of it. Sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? We have truth. We have spiritual truths, and hardly anybody's taking advantage of it because they're too busy with 
you know, something else that is more trivial. So the, it, it takes uh, over two weeks, more than two weeks, for, for a full fourth of us to actually develop optimal levels of vitamin D. That's too late. If you get sick right now and you haven't been taking vitamin D or taking care of your health in other ways, you know, there's many other ways to do this as well, uh, you will you will probably get seriously ill. There's tons of research documenting this. And so, so take it seriously, look it up, study it. This is, going to be, this is going to be on our Fallbrook YouTube channel so you can review it. All right, so here's the bottom line. If you've been taking vitamin D and or if your blood levels of vitamin D are above 50 nanograms per deciliter uh, in your blood, then, then you can just take a maintenance dose, four to 10,000 a day. For, for those of you who haven't been paying attention to this, you need to get on a higher dose, okay? You need to, and you need to look at the, what the research is saying on this. So, so you actually would take, would take 25 drops a day for a week to build yourself up, and then you back off, okay? So, so it, because it takes a while for your body to convert this to the life-saving, immune-enhancing 25-hydroxy uh, vitamin D. Uh, now, the, um, you know, how do we then balance in ending? How do we balance vitamin A and vitamin K2? It's actually quite simple. For vitamin A, you simply match the units of A to the units of D. So if you're taking 10,000 units of vitamin A, of vitamin D, rather, you take 10,000 units of vitamin D. You can get the liquid in 2,000 units per drop. You can get it in 10,000 units per drop. You can get it in capsules. It doesn't matter if you take it in capsules, in tablets, in, in liquid. Just take it, but balance it, okay? And when you look on the website or the YouTube channel, you'll see in the description section that we'll have that will explain this in, uh, more precisely. And then what about vitamin K2? A little bit more complicated because there's actually three different main kinds of vitamin K. Vitamin K1 that you get in green leafy vegetables in your diet, and most of us should be getting plenty of vitamin K1. Okay, but what about vitamin K2 is more important for decalcifying your artery walls, your kidneys, and your brain. And so, and almost everybody, 90% of the public are deficient in vitamin K2. So what you do, this one here has a one milligram per drop, which is a thousand micrograms per drop, okay? And you essentially match that with the vitamin D. So if you're taking 10,000 vitamin D, you take 10,000 micrograms or 10 milligrams of vitamin K2, MK4. That's another part of the confusion, MK4. If you're taking an MK7, you take a tenth of that. Uh, or about 200 micrograms uh, or 100 micrograms per thousand units of vitamin D. Okay, so again, that'll be in the description on the YouTube channel. Um, you got to click show more, by the way. You won't see it unless you click show more on the YouTube uh, channel under the video title. So the bottom line here is that you need to, you need to, Figure out what the right doses are for you because your doses are going to be different than what's right for me and vice versa. And you need to understand by doing your own testing. Get your vitamin D tested and find out if you have underlying medical conditions. So if you have heart disease, if you have hypertension, if you have diabetes, and most of the people who have those problems don't know it. Why? Because they're too afraid to go to the doctor. Do not be afraid to go see your doctor right now. Okay, that's a, that's a safer place to be than your own home. All right, so go to your doctor, go to your dentist, go to your health professionals, get treated, get evaluated, get tested. I went and got my blood done at LabCorp yesterday morning, and, and it's an amazing professional place. These labs know what they're doing. They're very clean, very safe. And how are we going to know what to do unless we test? So what's the right dose? Make sure that you find out for yourself. And you can put all three drops on a spoon and lick it off. 